Soaring to number 16 on the Courage Countdown, hang gliding fanatic Mike Harker. With a homemade set of wings, he proved that man can fly. And in the process, he invented a sport that almost killed him. For Mike Harker to take the, the risks he did when the technology was not available to do the, the kind of things that we can do today, it took an amazing amount of courage or an amazing amount of craziness, depending on, I guess, your perspective. Mike needed wings to fly. Inspired by NASA technology, he crafted a homemade glider using anything he could get his hands on. I went home and made one in the garage using some bamboo and some plastic and duct tape. And that's uh, when I began hang gliding with 69. But his casual hobby quickly evolved into a dangerous obsession. After we got a little more advanced, we did some pretty high flights and people started getting killed. And I started thinking about, uh, boy, I better do things right. The gliders were so primitive at the time. They were just tubes and sail. They had no aerodynamical uh, controls for uh, steering or braking or slowing. And if you stalled the glider at the time, they would take a nose dive and we could never get it back up again. So we, we had quite a few deaths at the time, but we kept improving. And each year I also set a little higher goals for myself. Mike kept testing the limits of gravity, always on the lookout for a better high. When he was shipped off to Germany with the US Army in 1969, he spotted the ultimate launching pad. The Zugspitz, which is the highest mountain in Germany. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be something to fly from that mountain? A 10,000 foot drop, a flimsy pair of wings, not exactly a walk in the park. Normal people just don't do these things. And the rational thinking human being will say, no, that's not possible, you can't do that. It took until April of 1973 to get up the courage to go off that Zugspitze. When you're looking over the edge, it's got to be the scariest part, and, and then taking that leap of faith. With a little faith and a lot of courage, Mike Harker soared higher than any hang glider in history. I got bounced and jiggled around a lot in the first few seconds, but after a while when I looked down, uh, I was exhilarated. He had proven that man could fly, and a growing legion of hang gliders wanted to be just like Mike. People say I'm a pioneer of the sport, and that may be true. There was nowhere for Mike to go but up. He soared from Mount Fuji and Mount Kilimanjaro. He even competed professionally and won three world championships. Mike was flying high, but his luck was about to run out. 1977, a deadly crash in Grenada threatened to ground the world's greatest glider for good. I was slingshotted down uh, about 350 feet to the water, broke my ankles in over 20 places and brought the, the femur up through the hips and broke my hips in four different places. And I broke my base of my skull and the atlas vertebrae and smashed my knee up into my eye socket. I was more or less dead and I don't remember any of this. 11 months in a coma, 16 months in intensive care, three years before he took his first step. This is truly, simply a medical miracle. And there's the courage it takes to step off the mountain. And then there's the courage it takes to get up out of the hospital bed. I'm still partially paralyzed. From the knees down, I'm totally paralyzed. So I have problems, but I certainly get around them and keep doing what I love to do. Harker's passion for hang gliding has yet to dim. 25 years after he conquered the Zugspitze, Mike Harker blew everyone's mind when he flew over Germany once again. The ability to get back on the hang glide after that injury is, is just impossible, except he didn't think so. I don't think I'm courageous. I, I don't really put myself in the list of people that I think are courageous. Uh, I was just doing my thing. Mike Carter, number 16 on the Courage Countdown, a champion hang glider who fought the laws of gravity and won.